Howdy folks. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bucket Fridge. I hope you're all doing very well today. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. In today's video, I have something very special for you guys. Something that I've been waiting to do. Today, we have the first part in a three-part series on the Destroyer. With the Destroyer looming on the horizons, this series will be broken up into three parts. The first part being a basic introductory to Destroyer, just kind of how the class works and functions. Part two will be a in-depth PvE guide, and part three will be an in-depth PvP guide. So without further ado, let's hop right into the video. All right, just so you all understand the three different parts of this series for the Destroyer, this first part will be a basic one 101 introduction. We will go over what abilities are taken. We will go over what engravings are taken. We will go over what stats you want in a general play style and how the class functions. So this will be the first part of it to give you all a general understanding of how this functions. So make sure to subscribe to catch parts two and part three. So let's jump into it and get started. All right. As you guys can see, we are here on my Korean account. Been playing over here for about a month and I've progressed the destroyer to a point where I feel like I can start to educate others on how to play the destroyer. So the first thing that we need to do is go over how the destroyer plays so as you'll see here i have four blue abilities and four purple abilities our blue abilities are our builders and our purple abilities are our spenders what are we building and what are we spending you ask so what we are doing is we are building gravity cores our gravity cores will then affect the amount of damage done by our spender abilities our purple abilities so typically the destroyer runs four builder abilities, four blue abilities, and four purple abilities. That is usually the spread. There are some builds that run five blue and three purple, but my personal preference so far, and seems to be the preference of many, is that by having four purple abilities, four of our spenders, we are never in a situation where we have gravity cores, but no purple ability to use our gravity cores on. One thing that I'm going to include with the names of the abilities is a sequence of three numbers that you'll see for example say one one two that will be the tripods taken primarily for that ability we will not be going into why we take those specific tripods that will be saved for part two but the initial part of the video here learning the basics will tell you which ones to take for example reading them from left to right top to bottom if it went one one two it would mean the leftmost ability in the first row the leftmost ability in the second row and the second ability in the third row does that make sense if if it doesn't, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to explain further. The first blue ability that we want to go over, or first two I should say, is that we want to take a gap closing skill. So that comes in the form of jumping smash, which is this ability. I'll do that again so you can see. This is jumping smash or called power shoulder where you come into combat and click again. It is a combo ability and lifts them up. I'll show you not on the boss. So either one is totally acceptable and it seems to be preference. I personally prefer jumping smash and we'll get into the details in the second part of the video on why I prefer jumping smash. Our next ability, perhaps our most important of our blue abilities is called Endure Pain. Endure Pain is a AOE that goes out and gives us a 40% damage reduction and a 90% damage reduction when the tripod is taken. The reason this skill is significant though is because it makes you immune to CC for five seconds after you use it and it also gives you three gravity cores. We will go into later in the spending section where I tell you what combo that you usually want to use Endure Pain with. That way you guys can do the most damage with said ability. It's also worth noting that Endure Pain also just got Taunt as well. Taunt, as you well know from the Gun Lancer, provokes the boss to look at you. And the reason this is significant is because Destroyer's abilities primarily rely on head attack. So being able to taunt the boss to you on demand to get a head attack is very, very crucial. Next is our counter skill, Dreadnought. Dreadnought can be a little difficult to land initially when you're first learning to play the Destroyer. It's not the easiest of counters out there, but it is a very short cooldown and will allow you to counter the boss and land some more head damage after the boss is lying on the ground from the counter. There are times when you replace Dreadnought with an ability called Power Strike. Power Strike is usually taken in a scenario where you don't have anything to counter, such as a Chaos Dungeon. So again, Power Strike can be replaced with Dreadnought in a scenario where you don't need to counter. And lastly, for our builder abilities, we have Heavy Crush, our bread and butter attack. This one will be probably one of your most used skills. 
All right, let's get into the really fun spender abilities. The reason that it's important to spend three gravity cores whenever possible, not two or one, is because you'll notice down here, I'll provide the translation for you. Whenever we use one ability core, it provides a 10% damage increase. Two abilities cores is a 25% damage increase, and three ability cores is a 45% damage increase, as well as you'll see a 10, 20, and 30 at the bottom. That ability is whenever you use a spender, it gives you a shield for 10, 20, or 30% of your max HP. As I said, now you see why it's important to make sure that you are spending three gravity cores and not two or one on your spender abilities. All right, our first spender that we use is Seismic Hammer. Seismic Hammer is a giant smash to the ground and spikes come up subsequently. What we wanna to try to do is you can see that there's two parts to the damage. You'll see the initial impact and then the spike that comes up subsequently. What we wanna to try to avoid is using it behind or in the middle of the boss as it doesn't do as much damage as it is a head attack. But what we want to try to accomplish is to get both parts of the damage at just far enough away to where the boss is getting hit by both the impact and the spike. All right, our next ability is a full swing. Full swing is a charge that we spin into the boss. The important thing about this is getting close enough to the boss that each swing hits the boss. You'll see there are quite a few swings. We wanna be close enough to where these first initial ones are hitting the boss. All right, next is Earth Eater. The important thing to see about Earth Eater here is that you'll see that we spin and then have an overhead slam, but the spin that you'll see will be pick up rocks actually will hit the boss. So you'll see if we get closer, we can hit the boss with a spin and then the rocks as well as the overhead damage. So again, we don't wanna to be too far away, otherwise we miss the rocks and only hit with the overhead. But if we're close enough, we get the rocks, the spin damage, and then the overhead strike damage as well. Save the best for last. Next, we're gonna go into Perfect Swing. Perfect Swing is a very long charged ability and you'll notice there is a little bit of walk distance before you swing the hammer. So what you want to try to do is space yourself accordingly next to the boss and then put your cursor where you want the hit to land. So for example, if I swing over this way, oops, wrong ability. If I swing over this way, I'll walk this way and swing the hammer this way. So it's very important that you have your cursor facing the right direction at the head of the boss to come in and swing and hit the boss. You'll notice as well that when you hit the boss in the correct spot, you will hear a little dink noise. That noise signifies that you hit the ability and didn't miss. There are times when you'll miss and you'll not hear it. For example, no dink. But when we hit the boss in the head correctly, the dink goes off. Our last ability, our identity skill, before we get into the awakening skill, is actually one of the most fun abilities on Destroyer. So what you'll see is this little blue bar down here, meaning we have full identity skill charged up. What we do is we hit our Z and you'll see this field comes around us. And when we hit Z, we actually will put this core into the center there that will root enemies, as well as this field around us will pull enemies towards us like a gravitational field. And perhaps the most fun part of the ability, while the smash and pull in is fun, there is a giant attack speed increase that stacks while we have this ability up. I'll show you here. So you can hold down your auto attack ability and you'll see that our attacks get subsequently faster and faster and faster, capping out at a quite a ridiculous attack speed. So while this is ability up, you'll pull foes closer to you. You can use the ability to root them in place there and then uh, bonk the daylights out of them. Is there a more satisfying skill in the game? I think not. Lastly, we have our awakening skill, Terra Break. Terra Break is pretty darn fantastic. What we do is we smash the ground here and you'll see two other little gravity fields pop up and then a giant overhead smash in the middle. Got it one more time. Big overhead swing. Everybody goes up in the air, come down, bam. The cool thing about Terra Break is that these little gravitational fields in here, you'll see inside that circle, actually will levitate enemies in the air and then slam them down when you do your big overhead attack. So it is also CC as well as one of our larger damage abilities. Now that we know how our abilities work and what they do, we'll just go over some basic rotations. Usually you want to be using two of our blue abilities to every one purple ability. Most of our abilities generate two gravity cores. Some generate three 
like indoor pain, but usually you'll need two blues to generate enough for one big purple swing. So we want to get into combat with our gap closer jumping smash. So we'll jump into combat here, jumping smash. And then once we're in combat, then we can use our dreadnought or heavy crush to generate our third core, as you'll see. And then I usually like to use say seismic hammer first and then follow up with an endure pain into a perfect swing. The reason it's important to use endure pain with a perfect swing, as I mentioned earlier, is because the endure pain makes you immune to CC for five seconds, making you uninterruptible during your perfect swing. And nothing feels worse on Destroyer than getting interrupted during your perfect swing. Because it is our highest damage ability and one of the harder abilities to land, make sure that you're comboing it with endure door pain whenever possible. But otherwise, just use your situational awareness to use whichever ability you believe is best. But just remember, we want to use two of our blue abilities to make sure we have our three gravity cores and then use one of our spender abilities with the three gravity cores to gain a shield and do extra damage. And then we can rinse and repeat as you'll see here. All right, now that we've gone over the basic gameplay of Destroyer, let's talk about some of the more important things when it comes to playing any new class in Lost Ark. The first thing that we'll need to acquire are our engravings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include the English translation to the engravings from my NA account and give you guys which engravings I would run on a 4x3 as well as a 5x3 if we're able to accomplish that with the vault and coming out and our relic accessories coming out as well. All right, so as you guys can see, we are on my NA account. I'm doing this so I can provide you guys the translation for the engravings. I'm sure you know most of them by now, but I figured it'd be nice to not have to look at them in Korean. So for our non-class engravings first, the first one I believe that you should get is Supercharge. Supercharge is definitely the most important as a lot of our abilities have a long charge up timer on them. And this also will provide more damage for our abilities with charge up timers, especially our perfect swing. Next, I would actually go Grudge. Destroyer is the second tankiest class in the game, only being beat out by Gunlancer. But that is not to say that the Destroyer is not tanky, but the Destroyer does not have a shield as the Gunlancer does. But anyway, I would use Grudge as your second one. The 20% damage increase is pretty significant as well you won't really feel the pain from grudge as you'll have percentage health shields as well as just being an inherently more tanky than a lot of other classes out there as for your last non-class engraving there's a little bit of choice i personally will be going barricade as every time you use one of your purple abilities you get a shield so barricade gives you a 16 percent damage increase while you have a shield which will be fairly frequently or you could choose to go master brawler which gives you more head attack damage although you're not going to be able to hit the head a hundred percent of the time something like barricade might be a little better or you could even go something like curse doll for more damage even though this has another drawback you won't really feel the pain too much on destroyer so i personally will be going barricade but curse doll or master brawler will be a very good option as well so to reiterate my three non-class engravings will be grudge barricade and supercharge and our class engraving Hammer of Wrath or Hammer of Rage, depending on the translation, we'll see what we get in NA, what it's actually called. But while we're talking on our class engraving, why don't we go over that? Let's look at our class engraving that we'll be using at rank three. The critical strike chance is increased by 5% and critical damage is increased by 15% in proportion to the number of charges expended when using your purple abilities. So this again is one of the reasons that I mentioned earlier why we want to be using our three gravity cores every time we use a purple ability and not just one or two. The damage is scaled and we want to try to be hitting our purple abilities for the largest crits that we can, especially our bink or perfect swing. So to reiterate, our four engravings that I would use for a four by three would be Hammer of Rage, Barricade, Grudge, and Supercharge. If we're going to a 5x3, you could include either Curse Doll or Master Brawler, and then depending on how much we're left over with, whether we can do a 1 or a 2, you could use Curse Doll or Master Brawler for whatever one you didn't pick for your fifth engraving. While we're talking about engraving, something that I mentioned in one of the videos that I've previously made, five tips to help you prepare for new classes coming out, which you should all check out if you're interested in playing the Destroyer. I'll put up a card or a card whatever corner it's in, I'll put up a card for you to click on that. In that video, I discussed getting your recipe pouches because they might retroactively add new classes engravings to these pouches. And I wasn't sure whether they're going to be able to or not, 
and whether that would work, but upon the Glaver coming out, we actually learned that they will retroactively add these to selection pouches. So stock up, get 10, or excuse me, get 20 of the green, 20 of the blue, and 20 of the purple. That way, when the Destroyer comes out or whatever class you're interested in playing Destroyer, I imagine, as you're watching this video, duh, but you'll be able to get the rank three of your class engraving very quickly with none of the hubbub of having to buy it on the auction house for a premium. Lastly, the thing that I'll mention for engravings as well is we have an event going on right now, actually two events that help provide you engraving recipes for the Destroyer coming out if you don't have some already. In the previous video, the same one that I mentioned that I'll link the card for, I mentioned stocking up on not only class engravings, but non-class engravings as well. So you'll notice in that the Express character, there are actually rewards in the lower tiers that will get you both green books, blue books, and purple books when you get to the, the corresponding tier, but they will give you both class and non-class engravings. So when your destroyer comes out, make sure to use this express character to get some of your engravings if you don't have them saved up. And also it is in the guardian event that we have that allows us to go fight the three guardian bosses and get the winter illusion tokens. You'll actually see that they added engraving pouches to that vendor. So it's under special sales. We go over and you'll see See that there are both class and non-class books here let's briefly touch on some of the stats that you will want for your destroyer i'm using a website called loa wa it is where all the korean leaderboards are and you can see people's gear see what they're running and seeing what the better specs are in korea right now so as we can see for this build this guy is running a lot of crit specialization and swiftness being even what you likely will need to do when you're first starting your destroyer is we want to be stacking crit and specialization as specialization will help us with our purple damage. So initially crit and specialization are the two stats that you want to be going for, eventually adding swiftness when we have more gear and are able to get more stats on our accessories. So let's summarize all the things we learned in our Destroyer 101 introduction video. We learned that we need to use our blue abilities to use our purple abilities, which are our big source of damage, our builders and spenders. Make sure that you're using two of your blue abilities to gain three cores for your next purple ability, sometimes with abilities gaining three cores like Endure Pain. Make sure that you're also going and practicing and using a target dummy or even just lower level guardian boss or abyss dungeons to kind of nail down the destroyer when he comes out. Make sure that you're practicing because practice makes perfect. And as you'll see in coming weeks that we'll have the part two and part three to sharpen up the nitty gritty details for you so you can be the best that you can be going into Vaulton and PVP if you are a PVPer. We covered making sure that you have your engravings ready or ways to get engravings so that you have the proper engravings for your class, as well as the ones that you can equip for your five by three and your four by three subsequently. That's gonna wrap up part one of the Destroyer Guide in our three part series. I greatly appreciate everybody sticking around and watching this video. I have been so excited to make this video for everybody. Destroyer is gonna be my new main and I am so excited to be playing it coming in the next couple weeks. So when Destroyer does come out, I will be streaming on Twitch the day it comes out. So if you guys wanna come and hang out in Twitch with me and we can level our Destroyers together and get them into tier three and a vault in, make sure that you click the Twitch link down down below and come hang out as well as making sure to subscribe so that you can tune in for part two the in-depth pve guide in depth being the keyword and part three being the in-depth pvp guide for all my fellow pvpers out there but again thank you so much for watching i appreciate everybody make sure that you are safe be kind and i will catch you all in the next one